Will you be so kind as to uh, to describe your first encounter with uh, the couple, Mosa? Ah, yes, that's that's fairly easy. I met them when they were still PhD students um, in Per Anderson's lab in Oslo. Um, and I was very, very taken with them. They were obviously very energetic, very, very clever, and very ambitious, which is good in my uh, uh, students. And so we had long conversations when I saw them in the laboratory. And then we went out for dinner. In fact, they, they made me a meal. They, had, they were living in a very, very small one-room uh, flat in, in Oslo. And uh, we spent the whole night uh, actually talking about the brain. So um, I, I thought they were absolutely certain to be to be uh, uh, winners and, and, and top scientists. So when they then subsequently, um, just at the point that they were going to NTNU, um, asked if they could come to the lab to learn some of our techniques, I was, I was delighted and, and very happy to, to, uh, to help them in any way I could. The Norwegian audience uh, uh, naturally uh, knows uh, a lot about uh, Maybrit and Edward. Yes, uh, yes. And we, we don't know much about the. Oh, there was this other guy who also got uh, the prize. <laughs> who happened to get uh, the prize as well. <laughs> uh, where uh, do uh, John O'Keefe uh, where, where, uh, come from? John O'Keefe, well, uh, in a very short, uh, simple uh, summary. My, my parents both went from Ireland to New York uh, in, in the, just uh, around the time of the Depression uh, and they met there, married there, um, and that's where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in a part of the, uh, the New York which was a, a bit of a rough part of New York, the, the South Bronx. Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to get educated. Uh, I, I spent quite a bit of time working before I went back full time to, to, study, um, to study neuroscience. Um, and I was only able to do that because in, in those days there was a uh, college, the City College of New York, uh, which was free, had free tuition. So I was able to go back even though I didn't have um, any money at all. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get into McGill University, so, uh, which is in, in Montreal, and where I then uh, met uh, many Europeans, and particularly uh, uh, British um, neuroscientists, and, and decided to spend some time, a few years originally, uh, in, 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 in Britain, uh, and, and uh, stayed. So that's a very short, potted history of, uh, of, of my life. Last question, uh, Yes. Uh, at what point in time did you realize uh, the Nobel Prize could actually come from? That's hard to say. I mean, I think um, most scientists, all scientists know about the Nobel Prize. They know that it's, it's the highest accolade you can get. Um, there's almost a self-denying ordinance about thinking too hard about it because it's, it's like one of these things, if you really, as Edvard said, if you spent much time thinking about it and thinking about how you would get it, you're probably not going to ever get it. So, um, but I have to say that um, in the last couple of years, it's uh, particularly uh, following the, the, the grid cell discovery um, and the, uh, the, the, the fact that a lot of people in the field um, began to accept the stories that we had been telling and, and that the Moses had been telling. Um, one, one began to think, well, it could be possible. Could, could it be me, I suppose? And, um, and one never knows. And it's a very highly improbable event. I mean, if you think of the number of scientists who actually win the Nobel Prize, it's, it's very unlikely. So one never gets one's hopes up very much. <laughs>